See any cops? So once I get up there, it means go, it means stop. You got it? Yes. Don't break too fast. Yes, because you'll fall off the roof. You got it. Okay, let's do this. Oh, nice and slow. Nice and slow. I think I might ride to the trail this way next time. Why am I riding around the neighborhood on top of my GX like a Roman general on a war elephant? Well, you see, I got this new roof rack and it's bigger than my old one. In fact, it's big enough to support a full grown man, which is like two of me. So I thought it would be a good time to do a video on how we load up for car camping and overland trips. In this video, we'll take a look at how we approach packing and storage for the trail. We'll break down our box system. We'll look at how we lay out gear on the platform and distribute weight around the vehicle. Our new full-size platform is rated at 330 pounds by the manufacturer. But what do they know? Let's see how much crap we can stack up there before the tires pop. All right guys, I thought I'd do a quick video on how we load up for the trail. We upgraded to a new full-size platform this year and doing that gave everybody more room to spread out. And by shifting all that weight to the roof, virtually ensured that I'll eventually roll the GX with my family and on the way to the trailhead. Before I put the new platform on the truck, I took the opportunity of having off the roof to lay out all of our gear on the rack and redesign how we secure everything. Now, if you get a new platform, I really can't recommend this enough. Being able to lay out and configure the gear on the floor was so much easier than crawling on off the roof constantly to try and figure things out, especially in the Phoenix Sun. While I was at it, I also weighed and logged everything so that I can make sure that we stay somewhere near our gross vehicle weight rating. What is the gross vehicle weight rating? Well, it's the maximum safe weight of your fully fueled vehicle, plus all its occupants, payload, and trailer tongue weight as defined by the manufacturer. It's also the first thing that every overlander decides doesn't really matter all that much when they're spending their stimulus checks on bumpers and winches for the family RAV4. Getting the new rack forced me to reevaluate how I load up and my priorities in life. That led to a slimming down of both my aspirations and the amount of crap we drag out on the trail every year. What you really need for the trail is pretty relative. I need beer storage. Some people need inflatable couches. I prefer to sit on a rock so I can bring more beer. All right, so let's take a look at what we take and how we take it. Our entire loadout consists of about 15 items, two children and a medium-sized dog. We put a tent, water, ice chest, and the dog in the cargo area. Everything else goes on the roof. Sometimes we put the kids in the car too. Most of the gear goes into the box system. What is the box system? Well, the box system is a tried and true method of hauling your camping crap around in a box. Now, stay with me, it's not as complicated as it sounds. We use three medium-sized boxes when it's just Jill and I, and we add a fourth when the kids come along. We're currently using Plano 1719 boxes because they're cheap, strong, and pretty water resistant. They're also low profile and make the car look like we're crossing the Sahara. Even though like most vehicles outfitted for overlanding, we're just usually going to the closest KOA. Two boxes are just for bedding and sleep stuff, one for the girls and one for Jill and I. The most important box is the kitchen box. That's got our Jet World Genesis, all of our cooking utensils, cleaning supplies and expendables like paper towels and garbage bags. The least important box is the junk drawer. I just toss whatever I can't find a place for in there like this hatchet that I lost the sheath for and a spare one pound bottle of propane. I should probably get a new sheath for this hatchet. The beauty of the box system is that, well, you can carry the boxes. If you can't drive your truck out on that pristine meadow, but you still want to camp there, or alongside it anyways, you just carry the boxes over to where you want to camp. With the right size boxes, you can load and unload in a snap. We used to use larger boxes and it was always a pain to get them up there, but with our new system, I can toss them up there, strap them down in no time, and be on the road. It also makes grabbing the kitchen box quick and painless at lunch. Now, speaking of strapping them down, I switched to self-retracting ratchet straps this year. They auto-wind all the slack from the strap with the push of a button, which makes the whole process much more enjoyable. I'll put a link to the straps below, and while you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe so I don't have to cry myself to sleep again tonight. We secure the straps to T-slot eye bolts. To be honest, I kind of wish that I went with a flat wire mesh rack. That would have minimized the height when it's unloaded because with a wire rack, you just hook to the rack. 
The eye bolts are also a pain to move once the roof is loaded because the gear can cover the T-slot access holes. I know what you're thinking and the answer is no, there will not be a third roof rack on Rosie this year. When it comes to staying warm and having fun, nothing beats a campfire. Unfortunately, the entire world is a tinderbox now and it's illegal to have a real campfire pretty much anywhere, anytime. We solved that problem with our little red campfire. This thing is self-contained and amazing. The fake wood makes it feel authentic and it's way lighter and cleaner than lava rocks because the fake wood is made out of heat resistant fiberglass. I've also resorted to strapping a 20 pound propane cylinder on the roof. We tried small bottles, but they just didn't last long enough. A 20 pound bottle will give us 20 to 30 hours of fire and strapping a giant gas bottle on the rear of my roof rack seems to have had a significant impact on the number of people tailgating me. I worked up a T-slot mounted peg system for both the Little Red Campfire and the 20 pound bottle, which I carry in a half milk crate. I drilled holes in the bottom of the campfire and the milk crate already had holes in it, so all I have to do is drop each of them in place and strap them down with a single strap each. The box moves a little bit, but the can is solid as a rock. The last thing on the roof is the table and four chairs. We just strap all those down with a single strap. I should probably get a hitch carrier bag or something to keep the dust and rain off that stuff, but I live in Arizona and it only rains in like leap years now, so. The whole system packs for a loadout in about five minutes. The self-attracting ratchets save a ton of time on their own, and I've got eye bolts in all the right places that I just leave in place. I also used aluminum angle mounted in the middle as a chalk for the boxes. That's right, I pronounce it aluminum. The total weight on our roof is just under 200 pounds. Total weight of the family, dog, ice chest, and everything else inside the car is about 800 pounds. That puts us at about 500 pounds under the gross vehicle weight rating of the GX. Huh, guess I got some shopping to do. Now, speaking of weight ratings, the car roof and platform manufacturers have their own specific weight limits, which are usually different. Most manufacturers rate SUVs for something like this sort of load while most of us are loading up more like this. To confuse you even more, there are static and dynamic load ratings. The dynamic rating is what the roof can handle while the vehicle is moving, and generally about half of the static load. Now the manual only rates our GX roof for 176 pounds. When you subtract the weight of the platform itself, that doesn't leave very much room for necessities, like margarita machines. While some manufacturers give a rating for their roof platform, some, like Front Runner, play hard to get, and only say to refer to the vehicle manufacturer's limits. And then they show crap like this in their ads. That's not confusing. I think you can see why exactly nobody uses the vehicle manufacturer numbers. Most overlanders start out with a rack to carry their recovery boards and a shovel, but end up looking something like this about five minutes later. And then about five minutes after that, this happens. Since our roof load is still around 200 pounds, I'm not too worried about it right now, but it is quite confusing. All right, let's try and clear some of that confusion up with some general rules of thumb. No matter how you load up, if you are headed off road, you've got to take into consideration the center of gravity of your vehicle. You will want to keep your weight as low to the ground as possible and as evenly distributed between the tires. That will minimize your chances of this happening. We have a lot of warm bodies in the cab, so we usually have to put a lot of stuff on the roof. We try to reserve the heaviest items for the cargo area with blaze, like the ice chest and the water. Water weighs eight pounds per gallon, and you need a minimum of one gallon per person per day, so you can see how it'll add up quick. You also might want to skip that giant rooftop solar shower. Another consideration with roof load is wind resistance. We spend most of the weekend on the trail, but it takes a lot of highway miles to get there. So do yourself a favor and keep your roof system as low as possible to save a few MPGs. All right, guys, well, I hope you got something out of this video. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please hit subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you out there.